Hi guys, welcome back to my backyard mechanics. This is a Dodge Ram 4.7 motor. Um, I got the passenger side head on. I've installed it without the rockers. When I do the time and chain video, um, you'll you'll see why I did it. Um, so it's a remanufactured head. Um, very nice head. So um, this is your valley. This is open. Your intake sits right here, and it kind of droops down a little bit, but your intake sits right here. Anyways, what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna pull that intake off, and you're gonna see this looking really nasty. Mine was, anyways. So that took me a while to get that ready. I used uh, a screwdriver's brush, and then uh, to get all the loose stuff up, and I sucked it up <coughs> with a mini vac. So, and then. Um, I use clean strip uh, that stuff's pretty good it uh, eats up the rest of the rust and primes the metal back to black um, that way uh, it's, you know it's ready to be painted then you might want to wipe it down with a wet washcloth to get any residue off so if anything uh, is left uh, anyway so to get your uh, block surface ready for your head um, first thing you want to do is you want to sand this down okay uh, I use orbital sander it was really fast I was really happy um, I used a uh, hundred grit uh, they said you can go down to like an 80 on uh, steel blocks but I just went to 80 I uh, went to 100 um, so after you sand all this down you get all the stuff the stuff that flies off of it you know which ain't gonna be much because that orbital sander is awesome and then um, you're gonna want to tap these holes which is you want to make these threads right um, so one other thing I want to point out this is your your um, this is where your oil shoots up to your head shoots up and return whatever and so you want to be very careful with this right here try not to get too much stuff in it at all because it's just going to go straight to your cams um, and it'll mess it up uh, so yeah you want to you want to get this ready with the orbital sander and then you want to get you they, they they make tap sets you know tap and die but i made my own out of a whole old um head bolt um you know basically i just see if i can get a better picture over here there we go so basically what i did is i just sh shave shave it with a grinder and then uh yeah i run it down into the hole you know you run it down into the hole like so and you do that until you um, you run it down, pull it back out, and you do that until there's no crud left on it. See, it's already starting to get a little bit of crud on it right there. So it cleans out your threads for you. So that way you put the new head bolts in there, uh, and you won't have a problem uh, with the torquing. So okay, so sand this. Then you want to clean out your threads here. Then after all that, you want to shot back all the little stuff that's in there. You want to get all that out of there, you know, it's really not too bad. You see what it looks like now. I'll show you what it looks like after I get it all cleaned up. Um, so you want to do all that. And then uh, once that is done, um, you know, you, what what I do is uh, I use acetone and then I wipe all this stuff down. Um, I, I usually uh, I start out with brake cleaner first because I have a lot of it and it's cheaper and I just clean all that stuff inside there you can see there's no gap on this one you know once they're up they're up I, I don't know so you can see there's like a little tiny gaps you see it down there little tiny gaps so that uh, brake cleaner helps spray all that crap out of there and then once you get all the rest of the stuff out shop back it out and then use the acetone to clean all this stuff up clean the walls clean your pistons it'll eat it up pretty quick um like the the residue all this carbon build up build up and then uh after you do all that uh, i watched plenty of videos and i've seen where some people use transmission fluid to kind of wipe the cylinder walls with it um and that's how you're going to get rid of that rust right there too i mean it's perfectly smooth it's just uh just just I, I had one day I had rain real bad and I got home and these damn cylinders were filled with water so as soon as I got home I emptied it and then I, I I'm not gonna use that clean strip on it I used some um 
rust aid. Um, so that stuff really doesn't work all that great. But I get it all cleaned up and I'll show you what it looks like. And then uh, that'll be my next video. So this, this video is just basically showing you how to prep a head or your block for the heads. All right. So I'll be back with the uh, next video. Um, might be kind of long because I want to I want to get everything done right. Show you how to torque them and all that good stuff. All right, guys. We'll see you. Welcome back to my backyard mechanics. Prepping the block for head gasket and heads. All right. Start with your orbital sander. 100 grit. That's after what less than about 45 seconds so it'll get a lot of this stuff off for you all right so all right um, now uh, do the rest of the head or rest of your block and I'll show you the next part okay nicely cleaned up pretty good pretty good um, you know, you got a couple of little, little light rust stuff right here, but ain't nothing little hand sanding can't do. Um, you're going to be able to have to get you some more sandpaper and just get you right around these corners, okay? Um, same thing with here. You get this little light stuff up. Um, just make sure you protect this hole right here. I just use my bolt, you know, um, got all the way around it, and then... Um, when I got close to being done, I went ahead and pulled the bolt. Just kind of just went around it. Didn't go over it, just went around it. Okay, well that's the next part. Let's get up all the small stuff. And make sure you protect your uh, big big hole right here. Um, because you don't want too much stuff to fall down in there. And then you can just kind of just wipe it out once you get it out of there. You see that? So, alright. Do that part. That's the next step. Now that you got the block all ready, next step is to tap your holes. Um, you, as you can see, come on, focus there. There we go. See how much crud is in it? You know? Um, so you're going to have to, that's just these little tiny holes. Imagine there's the holes where your, um, your head bolts go through. So again, I made me a special little tool. You know, these are my old head bolts. These are the small ones, and so I just shaved down two sides of it, and then uh, you run it in there and pull it back out until it moves freely. See, this is the one for the heads. So that's your next step. Okay, you want to run it down into the hole, like so. You're gonna feel a little bit of resistance. Let me get it down in there. Well, too bad, but I could feel it. All the way down, now I'm coming back up. And you see that? Got a little bit of oil in it. That's when I took the heads off. But you see all that stuff on the side right there? Especially that little little speech right there. Come on, I focus there. Yeah, right to the side of it where I cut the threads out. That's the little stuff that you gotta get out. So you wanna run it in there until you get no more, nothing comes back up. Alright? That's your next step. Okay. After you get done re-threading your threads, making sure they're clean and nice and easy to go down for your head bolts to go down. You want to uh, clean the cylinders. Uh, you can see that I did. There's no, there's nothing inside there. 
whatsoever. They're all nice and clean. They're shiny because I coat them with the uh, transmission fluid for the initial startup. So, uh, so that's what you want to do. Um, you want to have a nice clean edges um, for the gasket to sit on. Um, these are what's most important right here. These edges here, uh, they go around the pistons, bores, you know. Um, these right here, those are what's important because that's where the uh, gasket mates at. All right, um, you can see here along these edges right here, um, those are what's important. So you see the black stuff like this right here. It's kind of like a stain, you know. Um, so they don't, they don't, you don't have to worry about those. They ain't gonna come out uh, unless you surface them, you know. And again, this this is a video of, of how to put your uh, 4.7 back together while it's in the motor or in the engine bay, I should say. So, um, and that's it, you know. So now I get to uh, put down my uh, head gasket, and I'll show you that real quick. These dial pins make it easy to line up your head gasket. So you just, it's a little bit tight fit, which is perfect. You just go ahead and push it right on over, just like so. And make sure everything all lines up, which um, I already did the other one, so I know this gasket, uh, head gasket works good. So now uh, the next step is to get your head um, and then take it and, and make sure you wipe the bottom of it. Um, when you wipe, uh, you wipe the bottom with the acetone again of the head and then put it on there and then in, that's pretty much it um, like I said the next video I'm gonna do is actually um, putting on the heads and, uh, and and torquing it because that's gonna be kind of a long video um, so I want to make sure that's kind of right but, but that's your process right there um, so all right uh, I'll be back for the next one. All right, guys, we'll see it. And if you like my videos, please subscribe and uh, uh, like it. You know, uh, that's the most important thing, I guess. <laughs> like and subscribe. And uh, if any, if you see uh, anything I should have done or not done, uh, let me know. You know, um, I'm open up to suggestions. You know, it's been you know I'm a backyard mechanic, so. I'm just trying to do the best I can to help other backyard mechanics. Thank you. Okay, so it should look like this. All nice and clean and shiny. Alright. So now it's time to put this guy on. Very nice hits. Another thing you want to do is coat this your threads. I'm using transmission fluid. You know, you just want to get a little bit of something like that. You don't want to get it too sopping wet, but you just want to coat it a little bit and you put them in. Okay, you want to put them all in. You want to put them all in at hand tight. Okay, so you line up your head gasket then you line up your um, heads on those dials and the dials will kind of hold the head for you so make sure you get it on them dials all right these bolts here they already got light tight uh, on them so you don't need to uh, you know like lube them up or anything and they're gonna go one two then you got two more inside one right there and one right there Okay, so, alright, um, let me get those in real quick. Okay, they're all in right now. Everything is uh, finger tight, hand tight, whatever you want to call it. I just want to point out one thing. I am using the Chilton book. Um, this one's actually the Haynes manual, actually. Um, and you can see the bolt pattern. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then uh, the smaller bolts, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep, anyways, it would have been helpful if I put point them out, right? But I didn't think I needed to since they're already numbered. Anyways, you see how, see one and two, 
All right, so you want to work in the center, and then you see three and four, you start working your way out, all right? And, and it's a crisscross pattern, so there's five, you know, you go to four to five, and then the six. All right, so anyways, that's how you want to do it from center out. And the first round of torque is going to be um, 15, and you want to exercise your torque bar. And how you do that is you loosen that in, and then you go from zero all the way up, to all the way back down, all the way up, to all the way back down. You know, pretty much you're exercising the spring inside there, okay? So you can get a good reading every time. And then, uh, like I said, the first round is 18, I'm sorry, 15 uh, pounds of torque. And then you don't even, don't even touch these little guys here. And so once you get all of them down to um, 15, redo it again. Don't just jump to the next step. Because you got to do this in three steps, okay? So the the first round, like I said, you're going to do the big bolts. And you're going to start with number one. And that's where it's at because you got one here. You got two, three, four, and five, okay? So those, those are your bolts right there on the top side. But you're going to do back and forth in a crisscross pattern so you're gonna do one here and then you're gonna do number two okay and then number three you know jumps right back over to to either side of this one right here but you want to do it like the book okay so do it from the back three and then you're gonna to have to do four and then you're gonna jump over and do five which is back over here so it's kind of hard to see because the motor, I mean, uh, the, yeah, the motor's in the truck, but that's the general idea. You want to go by this book right here and for your bolt pattern. And I've already got my specs page saved. You know, you just bring the tab over. And so you can see right here. And it's got the illustration 4.7 VAC illustration 11.19B. All right, so step one, remember I said there's three steps, so there's step one, step two, and then there's step three. Step one, all you're doing is tighten one through 10, 15 pounds, okay? Step two, you're gonna tighten one through 10 again, all right, to 35, and then you're gonna tighten bolts 11 through 14 to 18. All right, and then step three is your final, and you go through, um, let's see, bolts one through ten, and it says turn additional 90 degrees. All right, so that's, that, that's where you, I use a torque bar. Um, I'll show you that in a second. And then uh, bolts 11 through 14, again, the final torque is going to be 22. So... I use this guy right here. We all know what a torque bar is. Um, so I use that guy right there. And let's say you're at 90 degrees right there. If you're going straight across the engine, 90 degrees would be like that. Okay. Um, because it's 360 degrees, 180 would be like a half a turn. Um, but we're only doing a quarter turn. So that's why it says 90 degrees. Okay. So that's how you uh, torque ahead. Um, let me get down to the first part of the um, torquing one through ten at fifteen pounds. Okay, show you that. Uh, I, I'm gonna torque them down, and I'm gonna show you how to retorque them down to fifteen because you you got to. I'll show you why. Okay, so I just got done torquing them all to fifteen. Now I'm gonna start back at number one, which is the center of the head. And look how easy it is to turn. So that's why it's very important to retorque them. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna give it a little bit. See, it hasn't even clicked yet. See that? Still, I'm still turning it. Oh, it just stopped. Okay, so you know, you get back on to number. See, look at that. I mean, I'm on it. I'm on my next bolt and it's just so sloppy. So that's why it's important to keep retorquing at 
15 until they all get tight. See? Still turning. You don't want to do this part fast, you know? Just take your time. Click. Just like that. Okay? So, that's why it's very important to retorque them at that first number. Okay, this is number three. See, I still want to go. I just got done clicking. So, and again, you just want to keep checking. Um, you can't, you can't be overly checking. You guess you want to say. So, you can see these things just it's really loose. So, again, just take your time. Go slow. Boom, just like that. You know. Um, so that was number four. Um, so we're gonna go to five, which is on the other side of two. And again, see, it should click when it hasn't. So just take your time. Click. This is a click tile corkridge, if you haven't uh, already guessed. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so that's it, you know. Oh, look how loose that one is. So. I'm gonna finish torquing these at 15, and then we'll go to 35. So that was six. So let's go to seven, which is back of the head. And again, that's why it's good to have, uh, that's not good, the reason why to have a camera phone. <laughs> so then, um, you know, that retorque, just keep retorquing, retorquing. Uh, that was seven. So let's go to eight, which is in the front right here. And as you get to your last one that you tighten, it's going to be less and less to turn because um, that's the last one you tighten before you start to retight, you know. Um, so let's go to nine. Nine is in the back bottom. Refer to your book, man, because... You know, that's the easiest way to do it. Come on, get on there. It's kind of tough with uh, holding the phone and parking at the same time. Come on. I'm going to put it down a second. All right, gotcha. So, yeah, you just do it like that. You see? I'm still turning it. Dang, hold on. I'm gonna left it here. So boom, click. And then we we'll go to 10 again. Alright, so 10 is at the top right here. You know? This is your last one that you tighten up, so it shouldn't take too much. And it did. So and that's why you keep rechecking. So, you want to make sure, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, no, I'm not going to be able to see it. But I'm still at 15, um, you want to check to make sure that's tight, hasn't got loose on you, and then you restart all over again. And you want to keep doing this until, you know, you get the right torque on each one, and the way you do that is when you start on it, it should click right away. See, I'm turning it. You can barely tell, but let's see. Focus here. All right. See, turn it. Boom. So we go back down to two again. Two. We're on two. No click. You know. No click. Click. So that's the that's the important part. I'm telling you, man. You 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 got to do it like that. It's a pain in the butt, and but you know what's more pain in the butt? Taking this thing apart. So, so you put it right there. Watch it spin. See that? Boom! Oh, click. All right. So that was three. Let's go to four. Four is right here. Let's see how much it turns. Good. Go to five. Which is right here. Let's 
Sorry about the birds. I mean, I guess I got a nest nook nearby, and every video I got has got birds in it. <laughs> Cuckoo birds. All right, so that was five. Let's go to six. Six is up top on the other side of one right here. As long as you know where one's at and two's at, which is pretty much the center of the uh, head. And so, see that? It's still going. So you, you, you just got to keep retorking it, man. I don't know how else to express it. Um, so that was number six. So again, seven is back here. That one was kind of hard to see. So I got it that time. Let's see how much it turns. Boom. All right. So we're getting better. Eight's in the front at the bottom. Let's see how much it turns. Boom. All right, and nine goes all the way to the back. Let's see here. Got on it. Click. All right, go to ten. Now this should be this should be it. See, it still has some room. So what you want to do again? That was the second time uh, tying it down at 15. You want to check your torque bar. And, of course, you know, it's at 15. It, you can't, can't really see it because the light's brightening on it. Oh, look, there it goes. It's at 15. So, it hasn't moved. Let me just check my butt again. All right. Uh, so, going back on the number one. All right, watch it spin. See that? Boom. And it clicks sooner, you know? That means you're getting it down. So. Two. That was two. Let's go to three. And once you keep doing this, you start to know the sequence of it, you know? There's three. Let's get on back on four. Okay, you see how it's like less and less to turn? That's the goal. Boom. All right, so what you want to keep doing is keep retightening really things, man. You can't, you can't, I'm not saying you're over tightening. You're just getting it to 15, you know? And what you're doing is you're pressing the head together at the same time. <sighs> okay, so we just did six, sevens in the back, back here. Nine to the back. Get on there. There we go. Oh man. So oh, that will click right away. So we're getting there. And that's what you want to do. You just wanna boom. So eventually they'll quit clicking. Okay. That was one. It's still got a little room. It's two. Little room. Just a little room. So I keep doing it until, look at that. Three right away it clicked. All right, four. Little room. All right, so I go until, until they're all sequenced. All right, all torqued at 15. I follow the sequence over and over again until they're all good. Oh, that was six, seven is up here. So again, you, you start to lose which track. You just gotta look at that book. Just remember, boom, it clicked right away. And then eight down here. Clicked. Nine's back here again. So 
So by the time, if you make it to this part of the video, then congratulations, because I know I'm just doing the same thing over, but I'm just letting you know, that's this is the way you gotta do it. So I just did it all again. Let's start back at one. Let's hope it clicks. Click, see that? Now we're starting to get it somewhere. Two. Click, perfect. Three. Click, perfect. Four. Click, five. Click, six. Click. And so, that's it, man. Um, you know, I went around probably, about, this is the fourth or the fifth time. But you know what? It's worth getting it right. So we just got it down to 15 all the way around. All right. Um, so now we're going to go do torque to 35. Um, again, um, you start with the big bolts. You know, the number one is your center of your head right here. And you work your way out. Just follow your, your Haynes manual book um, uh, or your Chilton's book. It don't matter. Go online, get you the bolt pattern, draw it down. And then write down the torque numbers and the steps of which, uh, how they all get tightened down. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to torque them down to 35 now. And then I'm going to go into um, uh, torque these down. After I do those big bolts, 35, I'm going to torque these down to 18. And then after you get done with doing these little bolts, after you do these uh, big bolts down to 35, you want to turn everything I'm sorry you want to turn these big bolts 90 degrees and then you finish out on these at 22 22 pounds of torque okay so that's pretty much it um, I'm gonna go ahead and torque them down to 35 like I just said and then I'm gonna torque these down again to uh, well not again I'm gonna torque these down to 18 and that's the end of step two now step three you get back on these big bolts with a breaker bar okay with the breaker bar and then you turn them 90 degrees a quarter turn that's it okay and then you finish torquing these at 22 okay and the torque the torque pattern on these you go to one that one in there first one two obviously three and then four okay so it's tightening up down this section first and then you go to this one outside his head and then the outside of his head all right so that's pretty much it uh, I hope you enjoyed it I know it's kind of long but it's, you just gotta do it right man that's there's no other way of doing it anyways look at this motor it's good in there guys it's freaking good in there so all I gotta do is uh, Get ready for this timing chain, which will be another video. I got this bag over because it's hot, it's covering the oil pump. I don't want no stuff to go down in it. Also, it's covering the oil pan because um, you can easily throw stuff down in the oil pan. Then you're, uh, where's my camera right there? Then you're screwed. You're fishing for bolts. Nah, not good. So, alright, guys. So, just to repeat myself again. Uh, you want to torque these down. This is step one. You torque them down to 15, and then you keep doing um, in this in the order one through ten that of the book, whatever the book says or the internet says. Because I, I looked it up both; they're all the same. Um, don't go with some jablomi guy. Go with uh, recognized people, you know, recognized website, I should say. Uh, so you torque them down to 35. I'm um, torque them down to 15, and then you. Um, uh, that's step one. Then step two is you torque them down to 35. Okay, then you torque these guys down to 18. Okay, and that's step two. Step three, you get back on these. I use a breaker bar and you turn them a quarter turn. Okay, 90 degrees. And then you torque these down to 22. And then that's it. The head is done. Okay, don't put your rocker arms yet because uh, you, you got to put on your timing chain first. Um, that's more important because um, you want to put your time chain on and then you want to spin it and make sure that everything lines up as you're spinning it. 
and then uh, you can put your rocker arms on okay and then you can spin it again because if something hits or like if your motor stops spinning all of a sudden you done something wrong okay so that's that's it's pretty simple um, so that's why I'm doing it in steps like that so it's kind of like a foolproof plan all right so um, enjoy my videos I hope you do like them uh, subscribe you know this is a Dodge 4.7 um, 2002 motor so we're having fun man Alright guys, uh, see you in the next one.